Okay, so good day everyone. So this is a pre-recorded lecture about uh, continuation of module 4 uh, nutrition aspects in food processing. So last time, um, if you still haven't browsed through part 1, so part 1 is about um, an introduction on um, global impacts of nutrition and how food processing is related to um, nutrition and to community development and um, relating also to economics no so uh, we already talked about uh, physical deterioration so this time we'll talk about chemical deterioration so in chemical deterioration included dito ang uh, lipid oxidation and hydrolysis we also have enzymatic degradation and we also have the light induced reactions and also protein hydrolysis and uh, oxidation no so here um first lipid oxidation so did you know ang um, lipids natin so with compared with uh, the three macronutrients which are carbohydrates proteins and lipids so si lipids yung least stable sa lahat ng uh, macro constituents in foods so bakit um it's because ang ating lipids are the ones that has more double bonds no uh, lip because lipid oxidation occurs when the double bonds of um fatty acids are attacked by oxygen, hydrogen, and other enzymes. So, kung makikita nyo, um, just remember, sabi nga nila, pag double bonds siya, so that is um, unsaturated na lipids. Um, pag merong double bonds, ang gusto kasi ng mga chemical structures, ayaw nila nung may kasamang iba. No? So, ayaw nila ng dalawa, ayaw nila ng tatlo. That is when it becomes very unstable kasi gustong mawala yung double bonds doon, no? And um, in this process, dahil nga ayaw nila ng merong kakabet, ano? ayaw nila ng laging may kasama, gusto nila ay isa lang, um, nangyayari na si, si structure natin gustong makipag-interact with other um, chemicals around it or other um constituents such as yun nga yung oxygen, hydrogen, and other enzymes. So, if there is an increased temperature, no, tumaas ang temperature natin, uh, there is an increased uh, lipid oxidation. So, because foods susceptible to um, lipid oxidation natin, ito yung list, no? Uh, kung makikita nyo, this is uh, the structure of an unsaturated fatty acid. So, meron niyang double bond. So, it will try to uh, remove that double bond. Si, ma-oxidized siya. So, yung mga susceptible dyan are uh, meats. Yung mga high fat, high fatty foods, no? Um, meats, seafood, uh, fried foods, nuts, mayonnaise, and margarine. So, other products include biscuits, um, cookies, ice cream, powder, ice cream powder, sorry, uh, dried whole milk, dried fruits, uh, milk powder, and um, coffee. So, itong mga to, um, madali silang masira din, no? So, prone to um, oxidation sila. So, the easiest to spoil compared to other food products ang ating uh, meat chicken and uh, fish so compared with others no uh, lipid oxidation causes loss of vitamins alteration of color and flavor and degradation ng proteins <clears throat> so if you ask bakit po ma'am mas madaling ma uh, masira yung meat yung poultry and seafood natin it's because of their chemical composition and their structure kasi uh, mataas yung concentration nila ng unsaturated lipids o yung mga marami silang double bonds. Um, mataas din yung heme pigments natin. So, heme pigments are the ones that makes the meat color na reddish, no? O because of the blood presence. Um, mataas rin yung metal catalyst nila and other oxidizing agents no? na um, nakakapag-deteriorate um, sa ating meat, fish, and poultry. 
Okay, so another type of um, chemical deterioration is enzymatic degradation. So dito, mas uh, familiar kayo dito because included here are enzymatic browning and non-enzymatic browning. So when we say um, enzymatic degradation, this is when... A certain enzyme catalyzing reactions, no, yung pinapabilis nila yung reactions, that's why it catalyzes it. It uh, mainly occurs sa fruits and vegetables. And when this happens, there will be a change in color and texture. So part of it is the enzymatic browning. So si enzymatic browning kasama dito si PPO na tinatawag nila or polyphenol oxidase enzymes. So, si PPO or uh, phenol oxidase, siya yung nagre-react with other phenol compounds and oxygen para makapag-form ng undesirable na brown pigments. So, for example, sa apple natin, if you leave it at room temperature, um, open, no? With um, reaction with the air, oxygen, and temperature around it, um, mag- magi increase yung reaction ni enzymes na phenol oxidase and then it will turn uh, brown. So, ayan yung itsura niya. So, again, um, this is a conventional apple, kung ano yung itsura niya, no? A conventional apple with PPO enzyme, sobrang brown yung kanyang um, itsura. And then, uh, when there is a reduction of PPO enzyme, binawasan na yung PPO enzyme, um, browning reaction will be lessened. And thus, uh, pwede tayo magkaroon ng apple that is um, normal, no? O kumbaga yung apple na hindi masyadong nagbrowning reaction. So, this, um, in enzymatic degradation or enzymatic browning, Right after picking the fruit, no, right after harvest, madalas yung mga nakikita nyo sa grocery na mga fruits and vegetables, uh, meron silang addition of chemicals no, in order for them not uh, to have a longer shelf life. Is it safe to eat? Yes. no. Uh, it is safe to eat because meron namang certain levels of chemicals na inilalagay doon. So, hindi hindi necessarily because nagkaroon ng chemical, hindi na siya okay na kainin. In fact, um, it has longer shelf life. Okay, so another is um, enzymatic uh, degradation is a non-enzymatic browning reaction. So, sa non-enzymatic uh, browning, um, part of it is the uh, Maillard reaction. No? It occurs due to interaction of reducing sugars and also amino acids. So, ibig sabihin, uh, if there is a combination of the protein and the sugar plus addition of heat, doon mangyayari si Maillard, uh, Maillard reaction. So, it is very desirable, especially sa baked goods, uh, brewing of beer, roasting of coffee, and cooking meat. So, lahat ng yan nangyayari. No? So, um, every time there is, um, kung makikita nyo sa meat, so let's look at the next picture. Uh, this picture shows, no, um, the, the darkening of the color, Maillard reaction, also leads to loss of protein solubility bitter of flavor, textural alterations, and even production of toxic substances. Pero hindi yan sa lahat ng cases. Because usually, uh, Maillard reaction, Maillard reaction is actually very beneficial. No? So, nakakapag-benefit siya. So, ayan, uh, because of the browning change of flavor, ang uh, uh, ating mis meat, sorry, meat products natin, mas pa, um, palatable siya. Mas madaling kainin. Okay, so another type of um, chemical deterioration is the light-induced chemical reactions, no? And this happens when there is a photo-oxidation. Mm -hmm. So, syempre, um, uh, light-induced nga siya, uh, exposure to sunlight or fluorescent light may develop an off flavor 
um, caused by this photo oxidation so this happens mostly in milk chocolate butter and um, other foods so kung mapapansin nyo again itong mga food items na to are um, high in lipids no ibig sabihin matataas talaga yung unsaturated uh, fatty acids nila so again ayan dairy products um they are very sensitive to light oxidation again aside from its structure no aside from the structure na mataas yung lipids nila yung unsaturated mataas din yung uh, vitamin B2 nila presence of riboflavin which is um, it functions as a strong photosynthesizer no I ibig sabihin inaabsorb talaga dahil mataas ang B2 sila yung nag absorb ng um, UV light. So, ayan. Okay. So, another chemical deterioration is a protein degradation. So, protein degradation happens um, in meats mostly. Um, because of the myoglobin and oxymyoglobin, yung nakikita nating pigments, no? Oxygen levels sa um, sa blood ng meat. It can be oxi oxidized into methmyoglobin, resulting the meat color turning from bright red to brown. So, kung kayo po ay nag observe So, for example, um, we have a uh, pig, no? Right after slaughter, right after uh, the slaughter of pig, ang, ang color ng meat niyan is super red. And then, when it is exposed to air and other environmental factors, mag-iiba ang kulay niyan hanggang makarating siya sa bahay and then up to storage. So, nangyayari ito, myoglobin and to oxymyoglobin. Kung makikita nyo, ang pinakang um, attractive na part dyan is uh, the formation of oxymyoglobin. Kung makikita nyo, ang ganda ng itsura niya. And then, upon... Um, uh, exposure to oxygen no? upon exposure to further air oxygen ang meat natin it might turn into um, methmyoglobin which is a uh, brown pigment sa ating meat no? brown pigment color so yan pag naiwan sa um, room temperature ng matagal na matagal so pwede yan na mangyari Okay, so again, um, this is just another um, illustration on how uh, oxymyoglobin, methmyoglobin, and deoxymyoglobin happens. So, si deoxymyoglobin is almost purple na yung kulay niya. I don't know if you have um, observed this sa mga meats, pero nangyayari po yan. Um, because of the redox state ng ating um, nababawasan, no? Kung baga, there is a reduced state of uh, ferrous. Okay. Okay. So, um, again, uh, just a uh, review. Ang changes in food natin, we have the intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors, which I have already discussed um, on part 1 of this module. And um, let's look at the relationship between the two, no? Um, on how, uh, again, uh, intrinsic factors natin are internal, ibig sabihin, on the food itself. And then we have the extrinsic factors which are um, anything that happens or factors affecting the food uh, coming from outside. So, kasama dyan yung environmental factors such as temperature, relative hum humidity, um, oxygen level and pH etc okay so um first is temperature so we all know na pwedeng magkaroon ng freeze damage pagdating sa fruits and vegetables pag excess um, sorry pag masyadong mababa yung temperature natin hindi desirable din siya kasi um, it will form ice larger ice crystals sa ating fruits and vegetables so, if there is an ice crystal change, magkakaroon ng um, structural damage and uh, drip loss. So, drip loss happens um, 
pag during thawing, no, pag tinoto na natin yung uh, meat. Okay, so looking at this, if there is a fluctuating extrinsic uh, condition, so nagbabago ang condition ng temperature, relative humidity, and everything around the food, there would be an increased rate of chemical reaction. And therefore, pag nag-increase ang rate ng chemical reaction, there will be faster deterioration. And pag tumaas, si, fa si deterioration rate natin, there will be um, nutrient losses. Okay? So, that is why um, very important talaga ang proper handling of food from um, harvesting hanggang storage up to processing and hanggang makarating sa consumer. Okay, so the use of another is the use of appropriate packaging is most important in maintaining the quality of foods and achieving the required uh, shelf life. So, the packaging itself, alam natin lahat, it protects food from um, these factors. So, actually, fatom yan. Um, from oxygen, temperature, o uh, sorry, na-double yung oxygen. Uh, moisture. Uh, and, uh, of course, microorganisms natin na um, nakakapag-further enhance yung uh, food spoilage. Okay, so in packaged foods, uh, meron tayong iba't iba, no? Uh, we have the uh, modified atmosphere packaging, o yung tinatawag na MAP. So, modified atmosphere packaging, dito, binabago nila yung rates ng oxygen, nitrogen levels inside the um, packaging. So, we also have nitrogen flushing. Nitrogen flushing happens sa mga potato chips, most especially. Um, kasi almost 99.9% na ang um, nitrogen level sa loob ng potato chips in order to maintain its quality na crispy and then also um, para, para din maiwasan ng microorganism. So, yan. So, kaya um, compared with other types of chips no, na nakapackage, i-compare nyo yung sa potato chips and and with um other products no and makikita nyo mas malobo yung itsura ng mga potato chips and pag binuksan nyo talagang uh, poof ba magaano siya um grabe yung pag uh, labas ng air inside the packaging and of course we also have the um vacuum packaging so sa vacuum packaging naman dito uh, bina vacuum out yung air inside the package so, this happens usually sa mga um, dried seeds, no? Sa mga dried seeds, yung mga ayaw talaga ng mataas na moisture level inside uh, the packaging. Yan yung mga binavac yung packing. Okay, so fruits and vegetables are respiring products. And the gas atmosphere in a modified atmosphere packaging often consist of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide with um, lowered level of oxygen kasi nga, um, oxygen is attracts moisture and increased level of CO2. So, yung reduced respiration rate which is sa uh, ethylene sensitivity natin. So, ethylene is the one that um, releases gas. No? Ethylene, ethylene gas siya yung um, substance na nakakapag-change ng color sa mga vegetables and fruits. And siya yung um, nakakapag-ripen no? ng pagkain. So, if there is a reduced respiration rate, therefore, um, ethylene sensi sensitivity in production and minimi it minimizes physiological changes such as oxidation, thus extending the shelf life of food. So, ayan, pag may mga nakikita kayo sa grocery, di ba? Aside from uh, magaganda yung color ng mga fruits and vegetables doon because it's um, meron ngang pag-i-spray ng chemicals, um, mas 
uh, mas mahaba yung shelf life nila compared dun sa mga nakikita nyo sa palengke na nakahayad lang, ba? Diba? Okay, so this is another um, a factor no, sa ating uh, food changes which is um, water activity. So, kung mapapansin nyo lang dito yung trend, ano? Uh, as you can see, yung mga fresh and canned fruits, meat, milk, uh, breads, fish, and cooked sausages, mas matataas yung water activity nila compared with uh, dried vegetable or yung mga dehydrated ng vegetable, cookies, and crackers, etc. No? So, mas mataas yung water activity nila. And the higher the water activity, the higher is the chance of uh, food spoilage. So, food, our food products, they are most stable at its monolayer moisture content. So, usually, ang pinaka-stable na moisture content natin is below 0.35, no? Um, kasi ito yung um, pinaka-mababa na rate, minimum rate ng ating lipid oxidation, oxidation is 0.35. So, this monolayer, ano bang um, ginagawa niya? It acts as a barrier to protect foods from oxygen attacked on unsaturated lipids. Okay, so another uh, relationship of extrinsic and in intrinsic factor is the pH of food. Of course, ang pH natin yung um, acidity level niya. So, depende nga sa exposure ng pagkain kasi, for example, eto no, we have the anthocyanin. So, anthocyanin is a pigment na um, usually siya ay makikita nyo sa vegetable or fruits na. So, makikita nyo siya sa fruits or vegetables with a red, purple pigment. Yan, no? So, uh, they are very stable pagdating sa mga acidic condition. So, ang acidic condition is the low pH here. Makikita nyo sa pH scale. And, pag mataas naman yung uh, pH niya, no? Nilagay siya sa high pH. The anthocyanins will be um, very unstable and will lose its color completely after 20 days of storage in an ambient uh, temperature. So, si anthocyanin, no, um, if you could imagine a red cabbage, and then, nilagay siya sa acidic condition, let's just say, uh, meron kami nun experiment, uh, nilagay si red cabbage sa vinegar, no, and then yung isa is, nilagay siya sa isang solution that is much more basic. So, anong nangyari, na, nawala yung color nung red cabbage, no or kaya naging mas pink siya or basta hindi nag hindi nag-improve yung color. So yan. So another is oxygen. So si oxygen it facilitates the growth of um, aerobic microbes and molds and it triggers of course the oxidative um, reaction. So as you can see no. Here sabi ni um at this is an example on how oxidation happens. So, sabi, he maybe wanna swap um, oxidation numbers. So, kasi nga, um, eto, no, gusto niyang palitan yung isang atom with um, oxygen, isang molecule. So, ayan, and then, mangyayari dyan, um, because there is a change, because there is a change in just one molecule here, nag-oxidize siya, uh, what will happen is that there will be a change in um, color, it, there will be a reduced quality. So, ayan, oxidative reactions leads to reduced quality, discoloration, off odors, off flavors, and even, of course, reduced yung nutritional quality niya. So, here, um, this is a plasma process without um, optimization. So, just imagine this um, molecules na lang. Na pag na-oxidized siya, um, wala, without the optimization, without any type of um, chemical induced na i-prevent yung oxidation, ano? 
Ay, especially na nangyayari siya sa mga cereals, seafood, dairy, meat, and edible oils, which has high in unsaturated lipids. Um, it will have this type of um, structure na hindi na maganda. And then, of course, magkakaroon siya ng health issues and safety issues uh, pagdating sa food safety. Okay, so we have, um, however... Uh, oxygen scavengers no? o yung tinatawag nating mga antioxidants so this uh, oxygen scavengers these are agents that react with oxygen in order to reduce its um, concentration para kumbaga hindi na ma further hindi na further magkaroon ng lipid oxidation so ang mga example nito are ferrous oxide, ascorbic acid or yung vitamin C We have sulfites and glucose oxidase, which is a type of um, enzyme. And saan nyo ito makukuha aside from, um, aside from chemically or synthesized um, produce ng laboratory, um, makikita yan mostly sa mga fruits and vegetable. So, alam mo yun, hindi lang basta ngayon kayo makakapagsabi na, ah, okay, um, uh, very healthy talaga sa katawan ang ang ating fruits and vegetables uh, because of its vitamins and minerals. But, um, masasabi nyo din na because of its antioxidants. And you can further discuss this kung paano siya nagkakaroon yung um, uh, nagtra-transfer ng electrons. So, nag nagdo-donate itong mga to, no? Itong um, agents na to, itong mga antioxidants na to, nagta-transfer sila ng electron doon sa free radical in order for it to stop the um, uh, oxidation process. Yan. So again, if there is a presence of fats, it is more prone to oxidation. So, if we will compare uh, polyunsaturated fats versus monounsaturated fats, so this is PUFA and MUFA, no? Uh, polyunsaturated, ibig sabihin ng poly is marami, no? Poly. And mono is isa lang. So, this is a type of structure wherein itong una nating lipid is uh, saturated, ibig sabihin wala siyang kahit anong double bond single bonded lang sila lahat we have here and the second um, illustration is a monosaturated fat so ibig sabihin um, merong isang double bond and lastly we have uh, polyunsaturated fats as you can see uh, marami yung kanyang um, double bonds so here uh, mas prone to oxidation itong si polyunsaturated kasi gusto nga niya mawala yung mga kabet no mawala yung mga um, kasama gusto lang loner so um example po nito is a moringa olifera oils or um, MOO so there is a study that says na etong si moringa olifera oil Uh, mas matagal yung shelf life niya. It's because uh, mataas yung contents niya ng oleic um, acid o yung C8. Yung C18 is nasa um, carbon number 18 yung double bond niya. So, with um, with one double bond. So, a type of monounsaturated fat. Um, dahil si MUFA natin, lahat ng monounsaturated fats, they are more resistant to oxidation or yung pre-prevent ka nila yung oxidation. So, here is an illustration of um, uh, fats that are high in saturated fat, fats that are um, with monounsaturated fat, and fats with um, high polyunsaturated fat. So, as you can see dito, um, those fats with high in SFA, no, are much more, um, kumbaga, mas stable, um, no, not really, um, mas ano sila, stable with, um, high heat cooking, no? And, uh, we have examples such as coconut, butter, G, animal fats, 
etc. And um, of course, we also have the fish oil which is very high in omega-3. Um, in MUFA naman, another healthy, alterna healthy fat pa rin. Our examples are olive oil, macadamia, avocado, and other nut oils. And si MUFA, if they are combined, so pag mas, uh, there is a way in order for us to increase the shelf life of food, pag ini-increase natin yung um, concentration or ratio ni MUFA sa isang oil. no So, pwede kasing pag-combine, combine, combine niyan lahat. So, ayan. And here, uh, yung matataas naman ng pufa natin are soybean, canola, corn oil, vegetable oil, sunflower, safflower oil, and grapeseed oil. So, here, uh, pag na-oxidized siya uh, because of intense chemical processing, uh, delikado, no? And it says here also, it's very um, unstable to heat, light, and um, oxygen. Okay, so um, another is a thiamine. Let's look at thiamine or vitamin B1. So, um, vitamin B1 is the most uh, or least. Uh, hindi siya ganun, kas hindi siya pinakang, hindi siya stable, no? With um, any, any type of um, processing. So, thiamine containing beverages, it can be improved by using appropriate type of uh, buffer pH, no? Um, ang ginagamit dyan ay yung mga phosphate buffer. So, mas mataas daw ang retention ni vitamin B1 pag ang ginamit ay phosphate buffer compared with citrate buffer. So, did you know that there are more than 3,000 food additives? So, napakadami, no? Um, kasama dyan sa food additives natin and uh, preservatives are actually sugar, salt, no? So, so yung mga yan, they are type of uh, preservative and also a food additive. So, kasama rin po dyan lahat ng antimicrobial agents, lahat ng antioxidants, ito yung sinabi ko na nga po kanina yung mga examples, um, artificial colors, uh, artificial flavors, flavor enhancers, chelating agents, thickening and stabilizing agents. So, um, again, food additives are beneficial talaga siya in the food processing. So, don't think of it dahil because, uh, dahil mataas ang food additive ng isang pagkain is hindi na siya okay. Actually, marami siyang benefits pagdating sa food preservation. No? Pagdating sa pag, um, pag increase ng quality ng pagkain uh, para ma-prevent ang food spoilage. So, yan mga yan. So, ayun nga. Um, again, uh, antioxidants natin, gumagamit siya. Usually added to high-fat foods. Um, ascorbic acid or vitamin C. We have vitamin E. We have BHT o yung ating butylated hydroxytolin. We also have BHA or uh, butylated hydroxy anisole. We also have chelating agents. So, si chelating agents, pag nakita nyo yan sa, um, sa food labeling, uh, ginagamit siya to prevent uh, flavor changes, uh, to prevent discoloration, and even rancidity ng pagkain. No? So, mga example niyan ay malic acid, citric acid, and tartaric acid. Um, I am sure na discuss uh, medyo na na discuss natin to dun sa previous na module, no? Yung pagdating sa food additives. However, um you will further learn about all of this pagdating niyo ng uh, third year, no? Uh, it you we will discuss further about the lahat ng mga um, nakalagay dito, lahat ng food additives, lahat ng anti, um, artificial colors, flavors, pigments, lahat ng yan. Okay, so let's look uh, into nutrient loss in food. So, ang um, nutritional importance of purchased foods no, depends on um, the composition of raw food or ingredients as purchased. 
depende ang nutritional um, impact niya if the amount depending on the amount usually eaten of course um, kung ano yung edible portion so when we say edible portion ito lang yung mga kayang pwedeng kainin no? so halimbawa sa saging syempre yung balat hindi naman natin kinakain yun di ba? So, ang edible portion lang sa mismong banana is the fruit itself without the peelings. Okay? So, um, usually, ang edible portion, uh, bawa, sa fish. Sa fish, ang edible portion lang yung meat itself. So, um, tinatanggal yung bones and other waste materials. ba? Diba? Okay, so, another is... Um, there, there will be nutrient loss through preparation and of course cooking. So, ano ba yung mga factors kung bakit nare-reduce yung nutrition content natin sa pagkain? Uh, number one is of course if um, food is picked too early or too late. So, masyadong maaga or masyadong late na na um, nakuha, na harvest yung food. So, vitamin C kasi, it increases with ripening. No? As soon as nag-ripen na ang fruit, uh, there is a higher vitamin C. So, nowadays, when uh, fruits are picked too early, ripening is prevented, no? na prevent nila agad mag-ripen by chemicals uh, that are used on tree and while on storage until fruit has left the tree. So, gumagamit sila ng chemicals in order to preserve yung nutritional content din ng fruit. So, another is, um, according to studies, vitamin C is significantly less, so mas maunti, in bottled fruit juices than actual oranges. So, um, so ayun, ano? Um, Perhaps it's because of the exposure of the fruit itself. Nung na-juice na siya, exposure to sunlight, exposure to oxygen, exposure to high temperatures. So, yan yung mga factors na pwede mangyari. Kaya, um, even, even so sa mga bottled fruit juices natin, kung makikita nyo, nag addition pa rin sila. No? nag add pa rin sila ng extra vitamins. It's because of um, possible exposure to um, undesirable na environment. So, wilted vegetables, no? Wilted vegetables show considerable loss of vitamin C then. So, next is um, another factor kung bakit nare-reduce ang nutritional content. It's because of its uh, storage time. So, pag wilted vegetables, no? So, syempre, lanta na yung gulay. Um, yung enzymes here in plant tissues, na destroy yung thiamine o yung B1 natin. And, um, vitamin C. So, nangyayari siya on the farm, uh, during transportation, in factory cool stores, on uh, shop shelves, um, sa bahay, sa mga cabinet nyo, refrigerator, and sa freezer. So, there will be no further loss of nutritional value at temperature that is uh, negative 18 degrees Celsius. So, negative 18 degrees Celsius is actually pag nasa freezer na siya until the food is um, thawed. No? Or until ilabas yung uh, food, there will be a nutritional loss. So, here, um, nagpo-pause siya. It's because of the... Um, freezing process, no? However, tulad nga nung sinabi ko kanina, hindi lahat ng food items are applicable to this. Kasi yung iba, pwedeng magbago yung structure and pwedeng magkaroon ng formation of larger ice crystals. Okay, so generally, the nutritional differences between cooked fresh foods and cooked frozen foods as served on the plate are small. So, um, pag, uh, for example, galing sa market, inuluto nyo yung fresh na vegetable, compared with uh, those vegetables that are freezed, no? um, hindi ganong kalayo yung uh, differences nila when it comes to nutritional content niya. 
So, another um, factor kung paano nababawasan ng nutritional content is because of the processing and cooking as well as adulteration, no? So, yung um, uh, examples ng adulteration. So, for example, um, yung thickened cream is adultered with uh, cheap gelatin from boiled animal or skeletal joint. So, syempre, um, pag pina-adulteration means meron kayong pinapalitan in order kung pwede nga, halimbawa, maka, makabawa sa gastos, pwede ganyan, no? Um, malimbawa, uh, orange juice includes skin and teeth. So, dito, um, hin hindi tama yung processing niya. Ay, sorry, na wala Okay, so here, hindi tama yung process niya. So, yung mga uh, non-edible na portions nakakasama. And so on. No? So, ayan. So, here, um, ito yung iba't ibang methods of uh, food processing. So, we have the physical methods and chemical methods. And mostly, na-discuss na sa inyo itong physical methods, no? Uh, yung pasteurization, uh, frying, fermentation, baking and cooking, blanching, irradiation, drying, canning, and extrusion cooking. So, sa chemical methods, we have uh, balancing the pH of the food, uh, controlling water activity, use of food additives, um, intermediate uh, moisture foods. Okay, so sa use of heat, um, we have four types ng processing sa heat. We have the direct heat. So, pag sinabi natin direct heat, um, ito yung mga roasting. We have grilling, um, uh, baking. So, yung mga yan. Uh, with water. So, syempre, pag merong tubig na kasama, along with the heat, we have blanching, boiling, stewing, bracing, and steaming. So, usually, this is around um, 100 degrees Celsius. We have uh, the uh, heat with the use of fat, so frying, so gumagamit ng oils, no? So, dito mas mataas yung temperature. We have uh, microwave and infrared uh, cooking. So, sa microwave and infrared cooking ay gumagamit tayo ng machine. Okay. So, did you know that microwave ovens uh, cause relatively little loss? No? So, baunti lang yung loss of nutrients niya. However, um, only few people use them for other than reheating and defrosting. So, syempre nga, um, because um, sa pagdating sa microwave naman talaga, hindi tayo masyadong sure how the food will... Um, the food will cook, no, talaga. So, as you can see here, syempre, ang pinakang loss ng nutrients dito, so, kaya, di ba, sinasabi nila, pag, um, pag fatty daw, or, I mean, pag fried daw yung pagkain, is delikado daw. So, aside from the fat itself, no, it's also because, pag mas mataas ang temperature natin na naaabot, is, there will be more loss of uh, vitamins, more loss of other nutrients. So, yeah. So, heat causes uh, the following to food. It causes chemical and physical changes sa pagkain. Um, usually, improvement in the flavor, palatability, and digestibility of uh, raw product. So, ang example niyan is, of course, the raw versus cooked food. So, sometimes, uh, heat increases the availability of some nutrients by destroying enzymes and anti-digestive factors. So, actually, um, uh, cooking process, food processing is a good, um, sorry, it's a good way in order to improve the palatability ng pagkain and digestibility. Kasi, even kayo ba, kakain ba kayo ng raw na chicken? No? So, wala pa ako nakikilala ang kumakain ng raw chicken unless um, sobrang um, nangyari na yon sa culture or parang it's just a culture na kumakain ng raw meat, di ba? So, but here as, as a fun fact, uh, versus, raw versus cooked uh, food, mas mataas ang calories ni uh, cooked, no? So, ibig sabihin mas available yung energy for you. 
So, hindi ibig sabihin mas mataas ang calories na mas bad siya sa'yo. No. Um, it's uh, actually an addition of energy, addition of um, that you can use sa inyong body, no? And also, mas mataas ang protein content ng cook na food. So, as you can see here, if compared, we have a 21 grams of protein pag raw, and then pag cook na siya, there's a 31 grams ng protein. So, mas mataas. So, ibig sabihin, um, heating increases the availability of nutrients. Okay, so, um, when it comes to industrial processing and factory processing, So, ang ginagawa niya is, of course, um, preserve food, uh, provides packaging para less damage pagdating sa transportation. Uh, there is a reduced home preparation time. And, um, of course, it improves presentation to a buyer. Okay, so in industrial processing or factory processing, yung nutrient losses niya usually are due to this three. We have blanching, heat processing, and the drying and dehydration. So yung freezing process, it has little effect and if done immediately after harvesting. Actually, yung nutrients daw, they are better retained if transported directly, no? Direct mo na siyang binili or direct na siyang um, nakuha and then cook it compared with those na naiiwan sa shelves ng mga supermarket, no? So, mas mataas yung nutrient retention pag um, direct. Okay, so sa blanching and scalding, it also helps kasi It minimizes the enzyme activity as first step in reservation of uh, vegetable nutrients. So, if you remember, sa blanching, usually ginagamit siya sa mga vegetables. So, um, niluluto siya ng mabilis na mabilis lang, nilulublob sa kumukulong tubig. And then, after a few minutes, uh, direct siya na i ilalagay sa ice cold water in order to stop the cooking process and in order to stop the enzyme activity. So, um, here, um, usually, ginagamit talagang heat processing sa, uh, sorry, industrial na processing uh, sa metal cans and glass jars. So, yung mga nangadelata, tsaka yung mga nakalagay sa ganyan. So, uh, here, there is a reduced amounts of uh, sensitive vitamins, no? Because uh, itong thiamine, folic acid, and vitamin C are not very stable to heat. Okay? So, uh, losses will depend on the length of time needed to destroy any harmful organisms. And this will be greater for, so syempre, pag malalaki, malalaki yung cans, um, uh, na-discuss natin to sa thermal processing, The, high, the larger is the can, the longer is the time it needs to be processed. Kasi, um, yung, yung heat process niya, mas matagal from the outside up to the uh, center of the food. No? The slower heat transfer. So, another is, um, losses will depend on the acidity of food. Kasi, may mga vitamins tayo that are not stable to low a low acid foods or low pH foods yung ibang vitamins natin are not stable on um basic environment so another um losses will depend on the presence of light and air okay so dehydration so dehydration meron tayong dalawang types we have the use of the dehydrator itself no yung machine and we also have sun drying So, here, um, in dehydration, it has little effects on uh, most nutrients. However, pagdating sa vitamin C, um, almost half nung, half nung original na vitamin C content is lost. And there will be a complete loss of thiamine, especially, most especially, if we add sulfur dioxide. No? So, again, uh, vitamin C and thiamine are very non-heat stable sila nga yung parang 
hindi hindi sila masyadong matatag pagdating sa heat. So kaya usually nag addition ng agad ng um, addition. There will be addition of vitamins and uh, thiamine natin. Okay, so now let's look at the stability of um, individual ingredients. I sorry, in, individual nutrients, ingredients, no? Uh, stability of the individual nutrients. So first, we have the protein. So protein is um, denatured by heat, no? Um, actually, mas um, kung baga when we say denatured, um, mas nasisi, mas na chine change niya in structure in order. Yun, ito yung mild reaction. So, it's a good thing, no? Uh, na ang protein are with the presence of amino acids and sugar and heat, mas, uh, mas nagiging palatable siya. However, uh, severe cooking conditions, no? It can change the structure of protein. Possible maging less digestible siya pag severe yung cooking process. And, um, masisira, no? It will change or destroy some amino acids, especially yung amino acid natin na lysine. So, even at prolonged storage, no? Prolonged storage at room temperature, there will be less availability of protein. So, um, si vitamin A naman, si vitamin A such as retinol and beta-carotene, they are uh, most stable to most cooking um, procedure. So, usually, si vitamin A, hindi siya masyadong uh, mawawala. There will be um, less loss in vitamin A. However, um, if there is a high temperature, sobrang mataas na temperature plus the presence of air, there will be a loss of vitamin A. So, for example, nyan, pag, ang guma, pag gumagamit tayo ng butter and margarine sa frying process, no? Um, as you can see, diba, sa butter and margarine, nagkakaroon din ng browning reactions. And then, um, si vitamin A doon, automatically, mababawasan talaga. Or, um, unfortunately, wala na. Ano? Loss of vitamin A totally. So, another if, um, again, another prolonged storage because of the presence of light of light and air magkakaroon din ng loss of vitamin A Pagdating naman sa B vitamins so B vitamins bilang sila ay um, water soluble sila ang pinakang heat sensitive no So etong uh, just recall this list no we have vitamin B1 B2 B3 B5 B6 B7 B9 and B12 and of course, the vitamin C. So, almost lahat ng water-soluble vitamins natin are um, heat-sensitive. So, unay natin si thiamine or vitamin B1. So, vitamin B1, paulit-ulit kong sinasabi kanina that it is one of the least stable vitamins. Kasi, um, it is readily dissolved in cooking water. And um, usually, it is lost in the drippings of meat pag tinotho. Um, it is there is a considerable loss under alkaline conditions. No? So, alkaline conditions, ito yung matataas ang pH. So, yung pH niya is from um, 8 to 14. So, um, when a bicarbonate of soda is used to enhance the color of grains, so... Yan, mas less yung, mas nag nagkakaroon ng loss sa thiamine. Another is, um, total loss siya with uh, presence of sulfur dioxide. So, sulfur dioxide is actually used as preservative pagdating sa mga meat products such as uh, sausages and also sa potato products. Um, um, however, uh, fairly stable sa heat si ating vitamin B1 pag ang food natin is acid, acidic. No? Pag ang food natin is um, in low pH, mas nagkakaroon ng retention ng vitamin B1. Okay, so next is riboflavin which is vitamin B2. So again, si vitamin B2, ganun din, same as B1. Um, 
water soluble siya again it will it can be lost from drippings of meat unstable rin siya sa alkali and also unstable siya sa light reactions nicotinic acid or niacin which is vitamin B3 is um, very stable siya no however it is lost only through solubility in cooking water so automatic pag meron tayong process of um, heat especially with water na no? um, mas mabilis na mawala yung vitamins natin kasi nga um, if there is a reaction between water and the vitamin structures nagkakaroon ng change of structure and then totally nawawala siya Okay, so vitamin B6, uh, B vitamin B9, and vitamin um, B12, kung di ako nagkakamali, uh, folic acid and pantotenic acid, or this is B5. Um, it is sensitive to heat and um, loss in cooking and canning. And uh, did you know that vitamin B12, no? It is the only vitamin that is not available in plants and ang source niya mostly ay makikita nyo sa seafood, sa meat, no? those that are high in protein such as cheese, uh, meat, eggs, nuts, poultry, um, seafood, milk, no? soy milk. So, sila yung merong matataas ng B12. So, ayan no? Fun fact. So, remember this. So, kaya yung may mga athletes no na o yung mga those that are vegetarian so pag sinabing vegetarian syempre ang kinakain lang nila is more on plant based so yung mga plant based na diet usually wala sila nung vitamins na yan yung vitamin B12 that's why nagsusuplement pa sila with a uh, B complex na vitamins Pero may mga studies rin kasi na nagsasabi na even if you um, even if you consume uh, etong mga to there is a, a high loss din ng vitamin B12 kasi mababa lang din naman yung content ng B12 dyan sa mga yan. Kumbaga, mas may source lang sa mga high protein compared with those that are plant-based. Okay, so in order for you to gain B vitamins, it is better to eat raw fresh fruit and vegetables, drink milk, um, cook with microwave or blanching instead of boiling, baking, and frying. Kasi itong ang mga to uh, uses water, so water soluble, no? O kaya um, ito ay through, through direct heat, ito namang isa ay through um, with fat addition. Excuse me. Lipat natin yan. Okay. Oops. So, and, um, of course, um, yung raw meat natin are, um, mas mataas ang vitamins nila. However, uh, this could lead to bacterial, viral, and parasitic infection if i-consume nyo siya as raw. No? Um, Kasi nga, hindi, um, mas, dahil ro siya, mas prone yan sa, mic, um, mas prone siya to growth of microorganism. So, if you cannot, no, last resort, if you cannot consume um, eating fresh fruit and vegetable, your last option is to take supplementary tablets and capsules. So, bakit ko sinasabing last option yan? It's because, Kung kaya namang i-consume, kung kaya namang i-consume through food, so bakit uh, kailangan pang mag-supplement, um, tiba? Kaya nga siya tinawag ng supplement in order lang to um, fulfill those needs na hindi nakukuha sa pagkain. Okay, so again, another discussion about vitamin C. It's the least stable of all vitamins being water-soluble siya. Um, it because it is readily destroyed by air and uh, yung destruction niya accelerated by heat, alkali, certain metals like copper and iron. That is why, yun nga yung sinas uh, ewan ko kung na-mention ko before na to, 
yung um, paghihit ng kalamansi, no? Yung nilalagay yung kalamansi sa fire. Uh, o kaya pinapainitan yung kalamansi juice or dagdag ng kalamansi. Uh, sorry. Pigain yung kalamansi tapos hot water. So, automatic parang baliwala na agad doon yung vitamin C, no? So, um, vitamin C is also oxidized by enzyme in fruit and vegetables that is released by damage such as cutting. So, as soon as makat ang fruits natin and vegetables, make sure i-consume nyo agad kasi prolonged um, exposure to air, uh, mawawala rin si vitamin C. So, again, um, si, si vitamin C, it can be partly protected by uh, sulfur dioxide. Um, so, again, however, pag nagkaroon ng addition namang ng sulfur dioxide, mawawala naman si thiamine. So, loss of vitamin C can be destroyed by prolonged boiling. So, kaya ang recommended cooking for vegetables ay microwave nyo muna siya and then i-blablanch nyo, no? Okay, so vitamin E naman... So, um, vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin, no? So, as you can remember, we have uh, four fat-soluble, which is ADEC. No? We have vitamin A, D, E, and K. So, vitamin E is stable to normal cooking procedures, um, which is uh, yun sa heat. It is not soluble in water. However, it can be oxidized in air. Okay, so this is a summary of damage factors pagdating sa iba't ibang um, nutrients. So, um, we have here the factors such as heat, light, air, water leaching, um, acid, alkali, and others. So, make sure you memorize this, no? So, let me just um, move this. Okay. So, make sure you memorize this or kailangan parang by heart, medyo alam nyo siya. So, we have protein. So, sa heat, uh, if prolonged, mawawala siya. Sa minerals naman natin, nawawala lang siya uh, through water leaching, no? yung sa thawing process. What else? Vitamin A, um, uh, it is uh, destroyed uh, with heat and also with air. Kasama yung air and then here um, air also with heat so combination lagi yung dalawa heat and air pagdating kay vitamin A and others it can be destroyed with the presence of metals okay so another is thiamine si thiamine it is um, very unstable with heat and also air and also nawawala rin siya with water leaching or yung towing process and it is not stable sa alkali conditions and uh, with the presence of again sulfur dioxide nga kanina as mentioned so riboflavin which is vitamin B2 um, unstable lang siya or uh, it will be lost through excess light exposure or uh, again ito pwede siya sa sunlight exposure or photo oxidation so nangyayari yan especially sa mga um, dairy products no uh, uh, in riboflavin water leaching also can happen again it is unstable in alkali conditions so folic acid naman which is vitamin B9 um, in heat it can be um, destroyed uh, here by air pwede siyang ma-destroy uh, however it can be protected by vitamin C. So, it can be lost also through water leaching and also with the presence of alkali. So, here, vitamin C naman. Si vitamin C is um, again, it can be uh, destroyed through heat. Uh, it can be destroyed by air. However, it can be protected with the presence of sulfur dioxide. So, if there is a presence of sulfur dioxide, automatic mawawala si thiamine. And then, um, it can also be destroyed with water leaching and presence of alkali, enzymes, and other metals. So, this one is just, um, sorry, 
This one is just um, a table summarizing kung ilan yung maximum nutrient loss niya as compared to raw food. So, kung makikita nyo po dito in different processes such as freezing, drying, cooking, cook and drain, and reheat, uh, makikita dito yung percentage, as you can see here with vitamin C, ang taas ng percentage loss niya with compared with other vitamins. So, dito nga, di ba, merong um, 80% agad yung kanyang um, loss pagdating sa dry heat, and so on. No? So, here, uh, even sa folate, ang taas din ng loss niya. Folate, no? And, uh, as you can see, sa vitamin B12, which is, eto nga yung vitamins that is not present sa plant-based na foods, no? It's only present dun sa mga milk, um, seafood, meat, poultry, milk. So, yung mga yan, um, hindi siya nawawala in freezing and drying process. However, it may be lost once it is um, uh, in cooked or in reheating. So, this one is um, in minerals naman. This is a table in minerals. So, pota in potassium, no, mataas yung kanyang uh, loss pagdating sa cooking and then draining. So, ayan. So, you can just familiarize yourself with this. And these slides are um, very um, available siya. It is already uploaded through our Google Classroom. So, just make sure, as a reminder, always check Google Classroom for any worksheet or quiz assignment. And make reading and taking notes a habit. So, thank you for uh, listening. Sorry, this is end of module 4. Okay. And um, we have references here. Nasa na ba yun si references? Okay. So, ayan, no, guys? So, just make sure to access uh, this. Okay? So, thank you.